Under my latest video, I found a comment from Richard and he is asking, Quality Guru, thank you for this video. From my point of view, the main problem is how to define special characteristics, how to correctly choose and not overload design. Is it possible to give us a good practice how to choose special characteristics? And additional question, what difference between handling CC and SC in the quality management system? Richard, if I understand you correctly, thank you for your questions. I will answer it in the following way. First of all, what is the standard, the IATF, for example, for the automotive industry asking us as suppliers to do or how to select the SCs? And then secondly, if we have selected an SC, what is the consequence of this? How do we have to control it? Let's go right in. If you are in the automotive industry, then the IATF 16949 global standard becomes super relevant for you. And here I put an excerpt of all the chapters that have references in it to special characteristics. And here we can see some of them. Organizational roles, responsibilities and authorities, 531. There should be a person in your department, in your organization that is able, that is empowered that has the right to assign special characteristics to the products. Another one, product design input, manufacturing process design inputs, design and development output. Here it is important that all the customer relevant information, the requirements are taken into consideration, are processed, are analyzed, and then at the end the SC and the CCs are properly assigned and then taken into all the documentation to communicate to the organization. Ooh, here's something important ongoing. You need to pay attention because if not, the severity of these issues can hit us as an organization and put at risk our customers. So it's very important then also to identify and then to highlight in the drawing, in the DFMEA, in the process FMEA, in the control plan, in the work instructions until also in the manufacturing shop floor where the people can see immediately, oh, this station is important, something is happening here. There is the SC or CC logo. We need to pay attention. Yeah, and last but not least, you should also forward it to your suppliers if it's necessary, if parts are coming from your suppliers that are influencing the special characteristics and you should have a strategy in place to monitor and control. Let's remember what are special characteristics. So we have by definition, we have two kinds, critical characteristics and significant characteristics. The critical characteristics are more critical than the significant characteristics. That's why they're called critical, but the significance are still significant. That's why they're called significant. In the critical characteristics, we have the safety and the legal. Safety means if the product fails, then a safety issue is the consequence. For example, if you're driving your car and the brakes fail, maybe the car can crash into a wall or another vehicle and hurt the people who are driving it. On the other hand, you have the legal consequences. That means if, for example, a product fails, it could lead to the situation that the car becomes illegal. That means it's not meeting now anymore the legal requirements. And that means the car must be pulled out of the market. That means a recall, which is not good for the supplier, neither for the brand of the car manufacturer. So nobody wants it. That's why they put it on a very high severity, safety and legal, 9 and 10 on an FMEA severity. The significant characteristics are everything up to an 8 and could be, I don't know, a radio not moving, uh, not, not playing music, uh, air condition not working, etc. These are things that annoy the customer. Of course, the customer will be disappointed. That's why it's an 8, but it's not as critical as the critical with a 9 or 10. How to control now those items? And if you look, for example, the IATF will not tell you what is the specific control corresponding to a CC or an SC. You have to define the controls. But what is, for example, defined in the VDA 6.3, VDA, Verband Deutscher Automobilindustrie, uh, Union of the German Automotive Manufacturers, VDA 6.3 in the book in question 641 says, if there is an SC criteria, you have to have a CPK, a repeatability of the process of minimum 1.33, that means a four sigma level, or in some cases, if requested by the customer, for example, 1.33. 67 
That means a five sigma process stability. And last but not least, yeah, if you don't meet the CPK requirements of 133 or 167, then you have to install a 100% inspection. And why is this the case? Because if you define that something is so important that it has these severe consequences, then we need to control it so we can assign the CC and the SC, communicate to the organization on each level in the design, in the plant, in the production, that this is important. And then we prove and give our customers the safety and ourselves as well with the process stability, the evidence that everything is okay and we can trust our process. And if we cannot trust our process, then we put somebody there or a machine or whatever it is, we make a 100% inspection to ensure that this characteristic that is so critical and significant for us is controlled. But when and where and how now to decide whether or not to assign an SC or a CC and how many of them and what is a must and what is optional. And here the ITF says that we should meet in the multidisciplinary team. That means people of all departments come together because like this we can have all the viewpoints represented and come to the best conclusions in the discussion. This is in theory. But in the discussion there might be the different arguments. Maybe some people are very risk oriented and they are saying, oh, we should assign many more different SCs and CCs because like this, our product will be so safe and our customer will be happy because the quality defects will go down. And on the other hand, maybe other people say, no, 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 no. We need to simplify. We need to save money. We need to do less because all the controls, ooh, then I don't see the wood for all the trees and our designers will be totally overloaded. Something what you also mentioned in the question previously. And in this way, the question is, okay, how can we manage such a discussion to come to the right conclusions? Is there maybe a tool that can help us? And there it is. There is a tool that comes out of the blue book of the VDA, German Union of Automakers, and it's called Special Characteristics. It gives you some guidance. And here's this quadrant model, four quadrant model on how to define whether or not to assign an SC. They use the concept of robustness. You have the robustness of design and you have the robustness of manufacturing. What is robustness? Robustness means sensitivity to variation. That means if a design is very robust, that means that it's insensitive to variation. If a design is not robust, it's very sensitive to variation. What does it mean? That means, for example, the function of the product can only be ensured if the parts behave in a certain way. If the parts and the material and the weather and something is changing a little bit, it could already lead to a failure. For example, the material is changing, the dimension of the part is a little bit bigger or smaller, the temperature is changing higher or lower, and then the part loses the function. If this is the case, then the design is not robust. On the other hand, the design is robust when whatever happens can happen, the weather can change, the materials can be a little bit variating, the sizes, the dimension, whatever, and the part will still maintain the plant function. So when you have a robust design, you have no problem because the design is made already in a way that ensures that the functionality that you need in order to avoid your legal safety or functional issue is always given. The function is always given because the design is robust. We have a problem when the design is not robust and at the same time the manufacturing process is also not robust. Why? For example, the designer comes to you and says in the FMEA session, look guys, here I put it on the table, my design has certain weaknesses. I think in these areas it is not robust. Under certain conditions there might be variation and this might lead to uh, weakness in the product and the loss of function. Then you know, okay, here are the not robust points. Now you ca they can go to the production guy and say, hey, production guy, I need you in this position to produce always very precisely with your process on point. Because if your process is variation, variating too much, maybe due to certain influences, then there could be a problem that 
leads to failure of function. Can you do this? Is your manufacturing process so robust that you can ensure this? And then the manufacturing guy can say, yes, my process is robust. It will no matter which weather is tomorrow. If it is cold, it will give the same result. If it is hot, it will give the same result. If the operator is changing tomorrow, another guy is coming, the machine will always produce on the same point. If you can say this, in theory, you, you have no problem. Because the design might have a weakness, but if you can guarantee that you always produce in a certain way, then the weakness of the design will be compensated by the robustness of the process, and at the end you will not have a problem. You only have a problem when the design is not robust and the manufacturing process is also not robust, because then the design will be very sensitive to variation, and the, the manufacturing process also might produce in a certain range, and that could lead to a problem. And that's why in this case, special measures are useful and required, and that's why we assign the special characteristics and the critical characteristic to make sure that we, we know there is a weakness in the design, there is a risk in the process. We cannot ensure that every part is perfect that there is no risk for our functionality and that we might then end up with a safety legal or functional issue. And that's why we assign SC and CC and then we label it in all our production documents, we label it in the control plan, we label it in the work instruction, we label it in the station so that everybody sees, oh, here is special attention. If we mess this up, something can happen and then we control also the process. We prove that we can reach process capability 133 or higher if agreed with the customer, or we go to a 100% inspection. But now you could ask, okay, that is easy, but what about FMEA 8 or 9 or 10? Is it like this, that if it's a safety or a legal issue, that I automatically need to assign a CC characteristic? And according to this model, what I just showed, not. But anyway, I would still do it, because when I have such a severe consequence, and even though I think something is robust, or maybe uh, it is not robust. Maybe something happens tomorrow, a change in the machine, a change in a software, I don't know, which is not in my control. I want to be sure that those characteristics are controlled. So in this case, based on the severity, the nines and the tens, I would also put it as a critical characteristic. And then I would prove that my manufacturing process is robust and stable. I would prove stability, and then I would monitor on a regular basis that all my process controls like Pokayokes and the repeatability and everything is working. And like this, I am in sleeping good and my customer will also thank me for this. So in general, this is how I see it. I hope this was helpful for you. Like the channel, subscribe, and I see you in the next video.